Hello once again, this is Old Man Pool, back again for yet another Modern Masters draft. Trying to get the last couple of drafts in before the format ends up closing out here in just a couple days. So we did get a chance to play War the Raid Mother in one previous deck, and it seemed kind of not fantastic, but not terrible. Uh, I don't know if it's a first pick over something like Terminate. I do like the card fine. I think I would play it in most decks, but I don't know if it's as high quality as Terminate. I think uh, Azoria Sing is a fine playable, but not crazy. Uh, Grixis Slave Driver, Mist Raven, also cards I'm looking for. Mist Raven's quite good in particular. I think I'm going to take the Terminate. I think it's the best card in the pack, and not too unhappy to start out with that. We got an Augur Spree, which is a fine follow up. We could also. <laughs> There's Zur the Enchanter, which I've actually seen not be terrible in some decks. Uh, if you can go and get one or two enchantments with it, it gets you a lot of value really fast. But I don't think it's fantastic either. Um, there's not a whole lot else in this pack. I think Pilfered Plans is fine. Uh, I think Corpse Connoisseur is fine. I think Familiar's Ruse is probably the next best. It might, it might even be a better pick than Augur Spree, but Augur Spree is already in our colors and it's removal, and I don't think I have every way you cut it from the deck. So I'm just going to pick it up here. Okay. So here we don't have an obvious pick. We do have um, a couple of powerful cards, like Bronze Beat Moa in the right deck. It's actually probably just pretty good in any green-white deck that's hoping to beat down. We could take the Rakdos Signet. We have kind of a controlling start, and we can maybe shift into a more controlling shell. On the other end of that spectrum, we could take a Spike Jester, and just really try and go to town with that. Spike Jester hits really hard, really fast, but also is kind of terrible if you're not on the super beatdown strategy. Um, I also think it is more likely to come around than Rakdos Signet, so I think I'm going to pick that up and maybe hedge towards being more of a controlling deck. But Spike Jester is also a fine pick. I could see playing that. Okay. So here we have another fine red card. Uh, we can take Pyroclasm and be pretty happy about that. That is quite good against some decks, and like I think a reasonable play against, playable against most. Okay. So here we have a Hanover Lancer, which is not exciting. Uh, Dregscape Zombie that's quite good in the sack deck, and not really anything else. We could play, take like a Ground Assault, and just say we're probably going to end up being um, in Jund, which is not a bad place to be. Uh, I think it's one of the better shards that you could be playing. But, so I guess do we think we're going to end up in the Sacrifice deck or a Control deck? This is our question here. The Rachno Signet works better in a Controlling deck. Uh, I guess a lot of our stuff does, Pyroclasm does as well. So maybe I'll just take the Ground Assault here and kind of hedge in that direction. Okay, so here we could take a Golgari Rotworm, since we're already kind of playing the right colors. Um, we could also play an Arachnus Web. I think the web is not fantastic unless you end up with a big spider, but if you do end up with a big spider, it's quite good. Um, we could also take the Nong Zombie here, which is another reasonable card in a um, Sacrifice Shell, but not, like, astounding. Um... I think I'm going to take the, the Rotworm here over the web. A Rotworm is a fine later game play, and right now we have exactly no creatures, no late game threats. So I think we'll take that. Okay. So here we have a couple of choices. We could take an Avacyn's Pilgrim just for the ramp, and again, if we end up playing powerful later game cards, that ends up being pretty good, even though it's uh, not in one of our colors that it's making. Uh, I think we're past the Burning Tree Emissary deck, although there's a world where we would still want to play that. I think Pilgrim's probably better. Don't really like the Inquisition. Um, I feel like most of the time, I guess it's fine if it trades for a card, and if it doesn't trade for a card, it's terrible. So, you will take the Pilgrim here over a Cobra or another Rotworm. It is more ramp. We really like more ramp. Okay. It's so not tons first here. We have some late white, the Hookmaster and the Attendant Knight are pretty good in white decks. Um, 
not seeing much red after our first couple of picks and definitely nothing that's not um, two colors. I think we'll take the slaughter run here. That's a playable card if an unexpected one. Okay. So here we have a Scourge Devil, which is okay if we do end up with a little bit more of a, a curve out rather than a big late game. Uh, we could play the Baloth Cage Trap. I don't think we're going to go into the Sacrifice deck. We just don't really have a whole lot of synergy with that yet. So I think Nong Zombie's probably out. I guess I'll take the Trap. That's not a crazy good card, but it's not a bad card either. Um, here we have, these are a couple of pretty good late blue cards. The Familiar's Ruse is one of the better cards in the Flicker deck, I think. Uh, you do have to replay the spell, but getting a, a second activation on your end of the battlefield effect can be pretty good. Take the Corpse Connoisseur here, though. Um, if we get a random Umbreal Rites, it ends up being pretty good. And it's not terrible if we get a couple of other Unearthed creatures. I do think it is not fantastic, but it's not terrible. Uh, I think we'll take the Sundering Growth here, just for the sideboard option. Plenty of chance that my opponent has a really, really good enchantment or something we just have to get rid of. Um, so we take Seal or an Ancient Grudge. I guess the Grudge is better if we're playing against lots of Sigments or the like. If it's enchantment, Sundering Growth is what we want, but otherwise Grudge seems fine. Um, take a Giant Baiting here, which... Again, I don't really think this deck is the one that we want to play it, but we'll take it all the same. And last pick, Cobra is not terrible. We'll probably play that. Um, I think the Cobra is kind of an underpowered card, but it's sometimes a necessary card. And you always want, if your opponent's really aggressive, just having the threat of death touch is not bad at all. Okay. So not a crazy exciting opening pack here. We're still definitely waiting to see some of our good big threats. Uh, if any at all. We can take the Savage Lands here, just for good fixing. Um, I don't think this is a Carnage Gladiator deck, even though I like the card quite a bit. I think it's needs it's pretty integral to the the black red sort of beat down sacrifice sort of deck. Um we can take the spider, which is fine, but crazy not crazy. Is it better than Savage Lands? Probably not. We haven't seen very many duels yet. And I think we are gonna want to play all three colors here. So we'll just take the Savage Lands. Not a terrible pickup, but not a great one either. Okay. So, I don't think we want another Rakdos Signet, especially in the dark where we aren't really seeing um, any huge threats. And I think the Seal of Doom is probably better than the Arachnus Web. All the Seal of Doom does need to be liberally sideboarded out. Some There are some matchups where it is just not good at all. But I think that is the pick here. Okay. So you could play Gorkline Rampager just as like a medium reasonable threat. Um, we could play. Yeah, I guess past that like a Rotworm. Feels like the Rampager is just going to be better than Rotworm most of the time, right? I think so. So we'll take that here. Get our first four drop, which is funny. I feel like this format's often kind of heavy on fours. Um. Again, not tons for us here. I wonder if we end up in... Well, I don't know. I, I can see the deck being a bit better if we just had some bigger late game, too. But right now, we're just kind of looking like a mid-range gen deck, which is not super exciting. We'll take the Battle Mage here, though. I do like the Battle Mage. Okay. Take the Jailbreaker. Right now, we don't have any um, Guild Gates, but that could change. I think it's probably the best card in the pack for us. We'll just snatch that up. So we are seeing some blue coming back this way, but I think it was cut pretty hard from the other direction. Okay. A Sprouting through next, we definitely play. It's not crazy card by any metric, but it is certainly not bad, and it is in our colors. Um, better than a Burning Tree Emissary or a Torch Runner, I think. So I'll pick that up. I think this might be the first time that we played this in the format. I think it's the first time we may have seen it played in the format, even. Hmm. Okay, so Slave Driver is a good pickup here. Um, that is a later game thing. I think it's better than Slime Molding. 
um, as far as late drops go. Pretty okay to pick that up. Um, I guess we probably just take another Cobra. We'd probably rather not play it, but some matchups will will want it, and when you want it, it's nice to have. You definitely want more fixing. Um, this deck is showing some weaknesses in a lot of different ways here, unfortunately. Um, haven't seen really very many on color guild gates. I don't know if there's just a lot of people playing kind of heavy controlish decks and are snapping them up really early, or if they're, they're just kind of light in the packs, but. I think we've only seen one duel that's been really good for us and we took it, so. I guess that's a try land, but. Only one really good fixing land that we've seen. Okay, so our original card pack back. Um, is there any way we would want a revive? Probably not. Recover's probably just better. Um, I don't know if we're getting any specific non-creature cards, so recover just seems a little bit better for grindy matchups. Um, here I guess we take the, the Arachnus Web over the Torch Runner. Maybe we'll get a big spider first or second pick in the next pack and be happy about it. Okay, I don't think anything here is going to make our cut. Um, Fists of Ironwood is, I guess, probably just what we're picking up, although it feels unfortunate. don't really see a world where we play Sin Collector, but maybe we should take it. It's enough better. I don't think we're going to play Fists. Eh, maybe we will. I don't know. It's probably more likely to make the cut than Sin Collector, so it should be the, should be the pick. Take Druid's Deliverance, I guess. If one's crazy aggressive, I guess maybe we could take that. Take Agent of Masks. If we somehow get a lot of fixing... It's kind of a fine later game card. Wow, that's a really late intangible virtue. That's kind of funny. Nobody's in the populate deck, I don't think. Seen a whole lot of these uh, populate effects come around. Okay. So, what do we pick here? Um, Grizzly Spectacle is fine. Do we want Entumor Exarch? Entumor Exarch might be better for kind of our value based deck. Works okay with Corpse Connoisseur. Um, feels bad passing Evil Twin because I think that card is quite good, but we just do not have the lands for it, and I don't think we're going to get them. We have to take um, Red, Green, Black lands pretty aggressively at this point. I don't know if we really want to be able to splash for another. Um, so yeah, I guess we'll take the Entumor Exarch and be okay with that. We want Grizzly Spectacle. How many? Is we have. One, two, three, four pretty good removal spells. Yeah, I think we'll take that. Okay. So there is a Demir Signet here, uh, which we could pick up. There's also Rectus Guildgate. Uh, Abyssal Spectre I like, but it's not crazy. Um, I think we'll probably take the Guildgate here over the Signet because it's off color and we're not actually ramping into anything that, that huge. So, probably take the Signet here. It's funny, I, maybe the first pack was just kind of blue light, but I feel like we didn't see much blue then, and we've seen a lot since. Um, take that Gilgate. Okay, the Golgari Germination, which is kind of a, a value card. Yeah, like there's a Seagate Oracle, Agony Warp in this pack. Some reasonable stuff. We can take the Bomber. It's probably better than Germination. I think we're really hoping to be kind of grindy here, but even with that, I don't know how good ger the Germination is. Like, we need to get probably three or four tokens before it's really good, and it's kind of slow. Um, I think we'll take the Bomber. I think Bomber's fine. Okay. We have an Orzhov Guildgate, which is fine. We have a Spider or a Ground Assault. So I guess the real question is, do we want another Ground Assault or do we want a Spider? Probably the Spider, honestly. Um, both comparable, though. Probably the Spider. 
We have a reasonable amount of removal right now. I think we just kind of need a little more creatures. We have a tough time getting through our opponent, though, too. And just no guild gates here. This deck is looking pretty sketchy. Take a jailbreaker, though. It's certainly possible we were just in the wrong colors, too. Like, white has looked pretty open throughout. Maybe we should have swapped there earlier. Um, don't think we want another pilgrim, but we pick slime molding, probably. Okay. And we've seen a fair number of fixing this um, in these packs, but nothing that we really want to play. Like giving us white or blue just are not in our colors. Um, I guess maybe we play Summoning Trap. It's a really, really grindy matchup. And I think it's probably better than getting like a gnawing zombie. Yeah, there's another spider. I actually kind of am hoping we'll get a gift late because it might be something that we need. Um, just to try and go aggressive on our opponent. This is impressive, having exactly two dual lands in this. Kind of a mess. Maybe what we do is we just play green-black and splash for the red, and cut like the Rampager, the Sprouting Thrinax, and the Kalrathi Bomber, and just play our, our good removal in red. That might be okay. I'm going to take the Cower and Pier for the sideboard here. I feel like we have a lot of reasonable cards, but very few like exceptional cards. Very few cards that we're really excited about. No real big bombs. Like our first pick, pick Terminus, or Terminate, is one of our the best cards in the deck. Um, so we take a Gift or a Pit Keeper here. Gift can just kind of steal games sometimes. If they don't have a removal spell, it's quite good. So maybe we take that over the germination and the pit keeper. Oops, oops, oops. No, take a pit keeper. <laughs> Wait a little bit too long. I guess madcap skills maybe accomplishes the same thing though against the right deck. So we'll pick that up. Okay. Nothing here we want, really. Yeah. I think we should have been white, because I've seen a lot of these, like, youthful knights go around. Mm -hmm. They're not like crazy cards, but they're fine. It's funny that blue seemed to open up as the packs progressed. Maybe the first pack was just really, really light on blue. But it felt like we didn't see a lot, and then we saw a lot. Alrighty. So if we're just planning on cutting away the red, get rid of Thrinax, the Rampager, and the Bomber, and then we're just kind of there. We keep our removal and we're okay with that. We may play another Cobra and take out like the Pyroclasm. Pyroclasm actually doesn't seem crazy to us. It kills a lot of our little creatures. So it might be as dangerous for us as it is for our opponent. Um, could play one another Arachnus Web, although I think we probably just want the one. Pyroclasm is not great. It feels like a little bit of shame to take these cards out because I think they're some of our, our better cards in the deck, but I think our mana is bad enough that we probably need to. Do we want to main deck Cower and Fear? Yeah, that's an interesting question. Over say like one of our ogre jailbreakers since they can't really get through anyway. Or corpse connoisseur. We don't have a lot that gets takes advantage of corpse connoisseur. I guess it works well with recover. But even then, what are we getting? Like one of our kind of okay cards. Yeah. The deck just seems kinda underpowered in general. You know, cut the pit keeper. Play counter and fear. Oh, 
also, yeah, I don't know. Agent of Masks is okay if we end up grindy, but it's just such a slow win condition. It's like maybe we can splash for that, but not not what you're hoping for for sure. Um, yeah, let's see what do. So we actually don't have a ton of things that we want to pay, play early. So maybe we do put the pit keeper back in and cut like a jailbreaker. So we have a little bit more of an even curve. Okay, well, I think this is what we're gonna have to run with. Um, we can definitely chalk this up to kind of a, a failed draft, but I don't know. I'll we'll have to look at it when I'm going through the footage. Maybe, maybe there was a point where I should have cut, split. I feel like we maybe got a had a kind of a boiled the frog sort of thing going on, where he had like a bunch of okay cards kind of throughout, and then sort of halfway through pack three, I was like, eh, it's just we haven't gotten any of the real staples, the real great stuff that can make this deck tick. It's just kind of all pretty mediocre. But definitely we'll we'll do what we can here. Um, probably gonna play I want one mountain addition to this. Probably want one extra. We have three removal spells that require it. Um, then we play seven black sources and eight green sources. Oh, wait. I'm kind of low, aren't I? 15, that's right. So I guess we have nine green sources and eight black sources. That feels not terrible. Three red sources, four kind of segment. Okay. Yeah. I guess we got enough playables, even though they were kind of suspect, not great playables, that we are going to be able to play a, a two-color deck and not feel terrible, terrible about it. Okay, well, let's save the snack and hope to get lucky in round one.